Graduates of Literature and also with a postgraduate degree in Education. So that tells you a lot. She's a teacher. She taught for so many years abroad before coming back home. Then continue with the trend of teaching, she also decided to become an author, a writer. And then she's now the director of the Ake Book Fair and Festival. Our pleasure welcoming you to the studio, Lola Shonai, to Close Flow. You're welcome to Close Flow. Very happy to be here. Thank you. Now, she's married. So I'm sure some of you are already looking a little, a little bit. Uh... Now, let's start with the fair first, before we go into whether you're married or not, and why you're not appearing as married. Now, the, the fair, what is it about, really? Um, it's actually a festival. So it's the Ake Arts and Book Festival. And it's um, one of the primary um, reasons why I thought it was a good idea to set it up and to organize it was because I thought it was important to celebrate, promote um, African culture. Um, there's so much beauty, so much wonderful history that we have. Um, but somehow we've managed to jettison it um, much to our disadvantage and we now often embrace hmm. everything that's Western. Um, so it's important for me um, that African intellectuals, African writers, thinkers, poets, speakers, artists, uh, filmmakers come together to talk about issues that pertain to Africa. Um, so that was the initial vision. Um, the other reason was to bring authors um, closer to their readers. Hmm. I think that's a, a wonderful way of inspiring children. Um, in November, just November last year, we had so many of, of the authors who came from all over um, the world, most of them African, going into schools in and around Abel Kuta to go and speak to the children. Um, and the feedback hmm. that I got from the kids was one thing that was phenomenal in, in itself but hearing how the authors themselves felt about the experience just being able to go into you know state schools sometimes private Some schools kind of virgin land as it were to go and share their experience and a lot of them uh, talked about some of the questions that the children asked them and how intelligent and These how astute hmm. you know the kids are um, or how, the, how astute they were. And um, it's heartwarming. It, those are the things that made it absolutely worthwhile for me. Okay, now, but let's step back a bit. Before going into this, I mean, you, you didn't realize this was going to be this uh, phenomenal, as it were. So, what were your expeditions? How blown away were you? I've, well, post-event now. Um, I'm one of those people... Um, who having finished one project, um, I immediately start thinking about how I can up my game, um, how I can improve on the last one. So in my mind, um, the, the project itself, the one that's kind of now in the past, starts to become slightly more diminished um, in, its, in its greatness because I'm looking ahead and I'm getting more and more excited about the, the next one. Okay. Um, but for me, I'd been a teacher for many years, a teacher both in the UK and also in Nigeria and a deputy principal. So organizing events, pretty easy for me because I would organize events, uh, two-day events at my you know, different schools, making sure that the students, the parents, everybody was occupied and engaged. So that's part of just my experience as a human being. But also for two and a half years, along with um, Dakbo Yewole, um, I organized an event called Infusion. It was a monthly cultural event in Abuja, which took place in a very swanky bar. Um, and I ran that for, for two years. So, so I already had an idea of how to put um, an event of this scale together. And of course, I've attended lots of festivals all over the world myself in my capacity as an author. Okay. Now, um, let's come back to this. Okay. Prior to our modern time, oracles, seers, prophets, this seemed to be the leading light, you know, trying to guide the minds of the populace before we now have modern authors because of printing technology and all that. So, do we still have our authors doing that same thing as what our progenitors were doing, the, the seers, the prophets, the oracles? 
do we have writers who are actually pathfinding for the populace now? Do we still have such in this community? I think we absolutely do. But let's, uh, when you're talking about authors, uh, yes, so there is the expectation that they will um, have, they will have a way of interpreting their the reality, um, interpreting and exploring um, the the experiences that they have, and and sometimes a national experience or an, the experience of their people. This is true, but don't forget that authors also are entertainers in that they produce books that help to to lift and to help children to kind of escape children and adults to escape relieve. into another world it's recreation it's leisure um, having said this i think in 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 a, an environment such as ours uh, in nigeria um, increasingly i feel myself as an author the I, I feel like i'm under quite a lot of pressure to speak and to express an opinion uh, on national issues um, you know, it, it's it, it's a big expectation that, that people have sometimes, and I respect that, and I hope that I can live up to it. But I, I will be the first person to say that uh, I am a flawed human being, So and uh, to that extent, I'm not always going to, uh, to get it, to get to it, get it right. right. Yes. But also, um, I... I, sometimes my, my views appear contrary. Sometimes they appear quite different from what um, the populace or you know, the gener generality of the people expect. But that's because I think by virtue of my education, mm. by virtue of my, my, the, my exposure, but also by virtue of the way, the, uh, of, of the sort of thinking, the sort of thoughts that go through my head <laughs> and the sort of things that I focus on, yeah. my views are um, sometimes dif different, for okay. want of a better word. Now, let's look at your novel. Yeah. You, you want to tell me here, privately now, or, or well, let me see, as a privilege. So what motivated that? Was it, were you speaking within the space of what you see around or were was it something? Was it an escapist? No. Um, the Secret Lives of Baba Segi's Wives yes. um, was based on um, a true, a true experience. It was somebody's story. I had a, a wonderful. Uh, my my brother had this lovely girlfriend who was a medical student, and she would often come to our house and tell us um, all the gory details about you know things that went on while she was doing her house job. And she came one day and told me this story about an Igbo. A uh, spare parts dealer who had dragged in his wife, his youngest, newest yes, wife, yes. and said, deal with her. And he was shouting and making this huge fuss in the hospital. And so my this uh, lady, her name is Anne, um, she was telling me this story. And then she said, ah, 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 you know, wait, wait, wait. Let me even give you the full gist. So she... She told me all about that first visit. She also told me about the subsequent visits of the wives. And I was 14 years old when I heard that story. And I'd just finished um, studying um, The Lion and the Jewel yes. by Wally Shrinka. And I wanted to strangle <laughs> Baroka because I just thought life was just so easy for him. This man can get any woman he wants. So somehow hearing this new story was just really attractive to me i love this idea of a man who was under the assumption that he was kind of king of the castle with you know great big uh, um <laughs> um <laughs> with with you know with great big testicles let's yes, just say that yes big and, appetite yes and everything and 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 here he is um finding out that things are not exactly what they seem and that was just really attractive to me. And that's so, how you came up with this story? Yeah, I didn't come up with it. It's, no, well, uh, but okay, but now you now re, re, recast it. So I all did. of us can then enjoy what this is all about. But Absolutely. What, 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 so what, what, what's the moral theme? What's, what's the moral takeaway from this? I don't know if there's, uh, is it, there's a moral takeaway. And I have this um, conversation with people who talk to me about the end, um, how the novel actually ends and how they expect a different sort of resolution. Yes. Um, I'm very much of the opinion that we still have quite a long way to go in Nigeria before polygamy 
becomes a thing of the past or maybe it will never be a thing of the past. And that's the reality that I've seen with the poverty, the extreme poverty that's, um, that, that we have in this country yeah. right now. Sometimes it does seem to a lot of young women that polygamy is the only option. That's the only way that they're going to be able to have some sort of economic security. Um, my, my grandfather uh, was a polygamist. Both my grandfathers were, were polygamists. Um, but there's also something about that setup and the way that my grandmother, who was the first wife, was extremely, extremely unhappy when my grandfather became Oba Alakberu Vikberu and started to acquire new wives. That was not what she signed up for. That was not their agreement. Before that, they were both traveling teachers. My mother was born in Okene. That's how mm. far my mm. grandfather traveled, mm. you know, mm. up, up, yes, north up north to go and teach, to, to be a teacher. And suddenly he's invited back to, to Ikberu. This yes. is a man who would, he was so domesticated. I mean, it, it just, he would take on domestic duties, I know, wash, wash plates, his daughter's yes, clothes. Yes. He had you know, this all this business of, uh, of 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 wanting to put his women down, down or to dominate them. It just didn't exist at that time. Uh, it, it, that wasn't the way he was. <laughs>